Daily Enthusiast, how are you doing? Welcome back, I hope you're all well and having a great day. So we're on part three of this conversion where we're taking this 1275cc automatic single point injection mini and we're converting it to a carburetted 1380cc manual. And it's not quite as straightforward as it sounds as I found out doing this. There's quite a lot involved. In today's episode, we are refitting the engine and gearbox, but we also need to replace the fuel tank. We need to adapt the wiring loom. We need to fit a new pedal box, a fuel pump, and a remote gear lever. So there's quite a lot involved, and we also need to convert the subframe as well. So an automatic subframe is wider than a manual subframe so there's too much clearance there so I'll show in this video there's some spacer blocks that you use to space out the subframe now I did get asked in the comments last week about doing the conversion the other way so going from a manual to an automatic now I'm sure people will get down in the comments and let me know but I don't think that can be done without replacing the whole subframe itself because like I say a manual subframe is narrower than an automatic subframe so you can take up space with some spacers but obviously you can't um, you can't make the subframe wider or not that I'm aware of anyway but if anyone does know please let me know and I'll pass that comment on to the subscriber Right, just thought I'd show this in case anyone else is doing it. So obviously this is an engine mount, it's the same both sides on a manual car. On an automatic, they're different left hand and right hand. Um, but obviously the automatic subframe is wider. So what you get is a conversion bracket, which is this bracket here. So this bolts on this metal block in between but you'll notice it's got a third hole at the bottom that's to hold it in place why because you obviously have to take these bolts out to put them through once the uh, engine goes in so you need to drill a hole in the bottom and put that uh, it's a countersunk bolt screw whatever you call it in the bottom and on the other side it's got the same arrangement however you'll notice the bolt holes are wider on the auto, so they're the whole, I don't know whether you can see it, it's just on the edge there. So the manual engine mounts holes are narrower. So again, you've got to drill the hole down the bottom, but you've also got to drill the hole there. And obviously you need to work out which bolt hole you're going to use, the front one or the back one. I've had a look on my Cooper and the rear bolt hole lines up with the brake pipe so that is the correct positioning for it. So that's what they look like. Obviously you've got that bottom bolt to hold it in place while you're fitting the engine. Um, both sides. What I might do, uh, I think the bolts are extra long because obviously you've got to go through another sort of 10 mil of plate. Um, I actually think they are gonna be super difficult to get in in fact, I think nigh on impossible to get in like that once you're putting the engine in. Because usually it's a bit of a struggle anyway. Um, let alone with an extra 10 mil to go through. So what I might do is weld K2 
captive nuts to the bolts themselves. I'll put standard nuts on. I think I weld captive nuts on there so you can put the bolts through from the other side and just put spring washers on them. For the moment, so we're missing a few bits unfortunately. I think for some reason Mark's taken this bracket off and I don't have this bracket so I can't put the engine in yet. Uh, and I'm missing the bolts for the bell housing cover. And um, I don't think there's any other bolts on that engine which are the same. Um, I certainly don't want to risk putting two longer bolts in because, uh, well, it could foul the clutch. So, uh, frustratingly, I think we're on hold for the moment. Uh, missing a plate and longer bobbins for the gear lever. I suppose I can get on and do the pedal box in a minute. I think the first thing I'll do now, and I won't film it, is remove the fuel tank. Um, yeah, I'll do that. I'm going to take the tank out next. I won't film it. It's very simple to take a tank out. I've done it on the channel before. Big half inch bolt down the bottom there. Uh, obviously, it's an injection tank so you've got the fuel pipes which you need to take off so that's the fuel tank in now a few subtle differences worth pointing out so this is obviously a tank for a carburetted car so the fuel supply and return pipes are at the top here so in a carburetted car you don't have a return the fuel supply pipe is obviously from the fuel injection pump which is inside the tank the carburetted tank has an outlet down the bottom here. So the fuel pipes are in obviously different places. Um, the breather setup is different on a injection tank as well. So that breather goes right to the front of the car to a carbon canister at the front. So we have, we fitted a new fuel tank sender in this, cleaned out the tank. Uh, I have also, this tank has been slightly, a slightly different setup. So at the top there, I've fitted the breather off the SPI tank on there. It, um, the shape of the top of the tank is slightly different on an, S on an SPI. Um, this lip here, obviously, because you've got the pump in there, but on a carburetor tank, the tank, the tank, I've always thought the tanks are bigger on carburetor cars, they definitely are. So it, it comes further up here and around the top. But luckily there is still enough room there to get that breather fuel tank breather in there so that fuel tank breather is plumbed in exactly the same as it would be if there's an SPI it goes to the front of the car and it will go to a carbon canister at the front um, the fuel feed pipe is down the bottom there and it's just going through the corner of the boot there there'll be a redundant fuel return pipe which I've taken off now which is those green metal pipes down the back so the fuel return won't be used and I've also so we've got the fuel pump we've got the fuel sender wire in there and that's the fuel pump wiring so i've run that down with the fuel line that'll go underneath and it'll go to a facet solid state pump which will be mounted on the subframe right so that is the pedal box in clutch slave or clutch master cylinder now uh, that was a complete and utter pig to do not nice um yeah i didn't enjoy that <laughs> took the seat out obviously to make my life a little bit easier but you have to take the steering column off get your hand right up around the back of the dash it's just horrible anyone that's done a clutch master cylinder will know about the clevis pin at the back and the, the split pin um and the first time i fitted it i fitted it all up and the pedal was um because of the return spring, the pedal was up really high. And when you go and push the pedal back down again, it then contacts the bulkhead. So I had to take the pedal box out again to push the pedal down to get it in. But anyway, it's done now. Horrible job, didn't like it. Um, I am stuck at the moment because I'm waiting for bits from Mark. So the next job I'm gonna do on the engine, I was gonna do it when it's in the car, but I might as well do it now. We're gonna take the head off quickly. Uh, nothing wrong with it. It's just precautionary, clean it and stick a new head gasket on it and a new set of plugs.
There we go, very quick and easy job there. So I've just literally taken the head studs out. Um, I've just used a flat block, just with some very, very fine wet and dry, and I'm wetting it down with actually a brake cleaner. Um, but yeah, it's it's very fine wet and dry, so you'd have to be there for days rubbing away to, to um, make anything uneven. Got a new BK450 head gasket to go on. So I've had all the studs out quickly, just made sure they are all clean and not seized or anything like that. Um, that goes on nicely as well, so none of those studs are bent. And then the head again, I've just wiped it off quickly, giving it a very light rub and uh, cleaned it with brake cleaner to make sure it's solvent free. And that is ready to go back on. So quick, very quick and quick and easy. Um, obviously when you're putting your head gasket on make sure it's the right way around make sure all the holes line up and everything like that but cleanliness is your friend there these BK450 gaskets have a coating that when it first warms up um, this is it's like, a, it's like a glue so when you first heat it up that sets the gasket if you've got any oil or if it's not perfectly clean then that um, Adhesive obviously isn't going to work. So that's the head gasket done. I was struggling there. That's one of the reasons I wanted it back in the car because when it comes to talking up, it's moving around all over the place. But either way, it's done, but it's not quite finished yet. Obviously, I need to do the tappets once it's back in the car, refill it with oil, run it up, um, run it through a heat cycle, retorque the head. Um, and yeah, that's that done, but shouldn't be any issues there. The, the old head gasket was absolutely fine. It was just a precautionary measure. So I think we're pretty much ready just to put the engine in now. Everything else is just waiting for that. I do need to sort out the wiring's going to be the next sort of big headache on it. Um, yeah, because it's got a... Well, I won't go into it now. Obviously, it's got an SPI wiring loom with an ECU and everything like that. We don't need half of that wiring anymore, but don't want all the plugs left around. So um, I've got an idea for what I'm going to do with that anyway. So the engine's ready to go back in now. I've actually done a few more bits off camera, um, primed the oil filter. I've uh, the engine mounts each side. I've welded captive nuts in the mounts just because I think that extra thick spacer for the conversion from automatic to manual is going to make the bolts really really difficult to get in so I've welded captive nuts in there so we'll put the bolts in from the other side and put them in with some thread lock what else have I done swapped over the speedo drive put the spark plugs in um I've got the gear lever remote in reverse light switch wired up uh yeah 
few other bits and bobs, but yeah, it's ready to go back in now, so let's get it in. Hopefully, it should be pretty straightforward. So, thankfully, as you'll see, putting the engine and gearbox in, back in, the manual engine, is much, much easier than the automatic engine and gearbox, just because it, the size and the shape, the automatic gearbox is physically bigger and bulkier. And um, a few people mentioned in the comments, I, th I thought it was just worth mentioning, and to go along with my thinking actually, that if I'd done it again, removing an auto engine, I think I would probably just drop the subframe down and lift the body off the subframe. It doesn't take much more once you've got to the point that you're removing the engine. There's only the sort of subframe tower bolts, teardrop bolts at the front, battery cable out the way, um, and that's pretty much it. You're not doing much more than you would be if you was just pulling the engine out. But obviously it just makes it much easier with clearance issues. And as one of the subscribers commented, actually, if you're doing a... Uh, a, a mini that maybe hasn't had a load of work done like this you, you're probably going to be changing all the subframe bushes anyway so for the sake of a few extra bolts I would recommend if you're going to remove an automatic engine and gearbox and you've got the tools and equipment to be able to do it it would be better off lifting the body off the subframe and engine and doing it that way However, uh, again, one of the subscribers mentioned that the, the engine bracket that you can see fitted to the engine here is custom made for a Mini. And it's designed to pull the engine out at a certain angle. And of course, when you've got the body of the car lifted at the front, it's not quite at the right angle. So he suggested lifting up the back of the car to reduce that angle of the engine might have made it a little bit easier. So something to try in the future.